All right, today we're going to be talking about when uh, decimals repeat and changing from a fraction to a decimal. Um, so in a previous lesson, we talked about the cheese stick problem where you have uh, sticks of cheese and you're sharing it amongst different people. So today we're going to investigate um, how three-fourths can be written as a decimal uh, 75 hundredths. 0.75. So this problem is set up where you have three sticks of cheese and you're dividing it amongst four people. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. Um, we're on page nine of your toolkit. Page nine. And we're going from fractions to decimals. Okay, so this is lesson 211, day two. Okay, so our first problem is three fourths, in which we have three pieces of cheese. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to go ahead and make it a 10 of these units long. Okay, so these are three pieces of cheese, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, now these three pieces of cheese we're going to distribute amongst these four people right here. There's one, two, three, and four. Okay, so our first question is when we divide, and remember we're dividing three divided by four in and out, in and out, just like the delicious burgers. Um, can we take those three pieces of cheese and divide a whole piece? Because this is the ones place, right? The decimal is right here. So can we give one whole piece to each one of these people? And the answer is no. I cannot give a whole piece to each of these four people. So zero whole pieces because those are in the ones place. So what we need to do is break this cheese into 10 pieces. Okay, we're going to break them into smaller pieces and using tens because we're on the decimal system. And deci means ten. So each one of these cheese pieces are now going to be exactly the same again. But now we don't have three pieces of cheese. We now have 30 pieces of cheese. Okay, but these are not three whole pieces. I broke each one into ten pieces. So each one of these little pieces right here is one-tenth of a piece of cheese. Okay, so this is one-tenth, this is one-tenth, one-tenth, everything is one-tenth. So how many pieces of cheese that are tenths now do I have? Well, there's ten here, ten here, and ten here. So I now have 30 pieces of cheese because three is equal to 30 tenths. Right? Three is equal to 30 tenths. Or we can write it this way, 30 over 10. That's 3. Okay. So now that I have 30 tenths, notice this is the tenths place. I can uh, now see can, if I can distribute that cheese amongst everybody. Okay. First, let's let's focus on why we are adding that zero because we've been doing this since elementary school, and now we kind of know why because we're now moving to the next place value. So we have a little bit more when we chop numbers into uh, smaller pieces. Okay, so now we have 30 tenths. How many pieces of cheese can we give to these four people? In other words, how many fours are in 30? And the answer is seven. I can give seven pieces of cheese to each one of these people. Okay, but these are not seven whole pieces. These are seven tenths, right? Because it's after the decimal place. And notice all of these are going to be lined up with their place value. So, Let's give these pieces out. So I give one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces goes to the first person. Okay, now I did not, remember I did not give them a whole piece, but now they have seven tenths of a piece, right? And then to the second person, I give this three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I'm going to give those pieces to this guy right here. So now he has seven tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's these six pieces, and this one right here makes 
7 tenths, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here's 7 pieces that I'm going to give to this person. So now everybody has 7 tenths of a piece. They all have the same. And what I need to figure out now is how many pieces were given out equally? How many were distributed to all the people so that everybody has the same amount? And the answer is, well, I gave 28 pieces out, 7, 7, 7, and 7. So 28 pieces have been given out. So this is how many pieces were given away. And this is uh, sort of why we're subtracting. These are 28, hundredth, 28 tenths, sorry, 28 tenths that I have distributed. So our next question is, how many pieces are left over? And the answer is there are two pieces left over, right? So can I take those two tenths? Notice they're still in the tenths place. Can I take those two tenths, those are two tenths, and distribute it amongst those four people so that everybody gets the same amount? And the answer is no, because I only have two of them, and I have four people. So what I need to do now is I need to break this up into uh, smaller pieces again. So I'm going to break it into 10 pieces. Let's just pretend that that's 10. I know it's, it's too small to see here. So I don't have uh, two pieces anymore. I broke it into 10 pieces and broke this into 10 pieces. So I now have 20 pieces. Okay, so I have 20 pieces. And here's where we would drop down that zero in, in our uh, algorithm that we learned in uh, a previous year. And so now I have 20 pieces, but they're no longer tenths. I took a tenth, and I divided it by 10 into 10 pieces. So I now have hundredths, and I have 10 here and 10 here. So I have 20 hundredths, because 2 tenths is equal to 20 hundredths. And again, this is an important point, so let's highlight that. Since 2 tenths is equal to 20 hundredths, I'm able to... Uh, change that to add to zero. Okay, so now that I have 20 hundredths, I have 20 pieces of cheese that I can now give to these four people. Can I distribute them to everybody so that everybody gets the same amount? And let's see. So I can give five, 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 and five. So if I give everybody five pieces of cheese, then that means everybody is going to get the same amount. So I'm going to give this five to this person. They are now hundredths. Remember, these are hundredths of a piece. They're in the second decimal place, hundredths. And I give this second five to this person, five hundredths, five hundredths to this person, and five hundredths to this person. Right? So we put up here how many hundredths did we give out? We gave out five of them to everybody. And in total, we gave out 20 pieces. Right? We gave those distributed them to those people. Now, how many pieces do we have left over? We have zero pieces left over, which is a very important uh, process because now I know I'm done dividing, right? So this is what's called a terminating. This is called a terminating decimal. And a terminating decimal is when you have a remainder of zero. All right, so let's highlight this. So terminating decimal has a remainder of zero. Because that's when you know, I'm done. My division has terminated. It has ended. And I don't need to go on any longer. So 3 fourths is a terminating decimal because of that fact. We don't have any more remainders um, once we distribute that that cheese. Okay, so our next problem that we're going to look at is <clears throat> um, we have two pieces of cheese that we're going to distribute amongst three people. Okay, so that we're going to put down here, this is the fraction uh, two-thirds. Okay, so two-thirds. We have two pieces of cheese. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then ten. Okay, so two pieces of cheese. And I'm going to take those two pieces of cheese 
and I'm going to divide them amongst three people. This person here, this person here, and this person here. Okay? And let's go through that whole process again. Okay, so first, can I give everybody one whole piece? Can I put a unit there? And the answer is no, I cannot. I cannot give them all a whole piece because only two people would get one. So I need to break this into 10 pieces. So now I have tenths. So I'm going to put a number here to see how many tenths can I give to these people so that everybody gets the same amount. All right, so in other words, how many threes are in 20? Because I now have 20 pieces, 20 tenths. All right, and you should have said already, I can give out six pieces to everybody. One, two, three, four, five, six tenths to this person. So zero ones, six tenths. Zero ones, six tenths. Zero ones, six tenths. One, two, three, four, five, six to the second person. And then one, two, three, four, five, six to the third person. So these pieces of cheese have been given out. I gave everybody six tenths of a piece. And once I gave out those six tenths, I've distributed six, 12, 18 pieces of cheese that I can now take out of that cheese collection. And what's happening is I have two pieces of cheese left over. So these are two tenths. And let's finish that up. Okay, so I give out these two tenths, but I need to break them into hundreds. And how many pieces can I give out? I now have 20 hundredths. And I can give 20 pieces out. I can give everybody six six and six that's 18 pieces that I can actually give out so I can give out six to everybody and that's six 12 18 and once I give out those 18 pieces what happens I have two hundredths left over now I'm in the hundredths place so what am I going to do with those hundredths I'm going to break them into thousandths so I now have 20 thousandths. So I'm going to take these two tiny little hundredths, and I'm going to break them into 10 pieces and 10 pieces. I now have 20 pieces, and they are thousandths. So how many pieces can I give out of those 20 pieces? Again, I can give out 6, 6, and 6. I can give out 18 of those. So I give out 18 of them, and what's going to happen? So by now, you might see a pattern, and that pattern is... This is going to happen every single time. So I am always going to have two pieces of cheese left over. Okay, and this is what's called a repeating decimal. This remainder of two always repeats, right? So in a repeating decimal, like for example, this is just going to keep getting distributed by the sixes. Six pieces left over, I mean six pieces distributed. So I'm going to have six in the hundreds place, the thousands, the ten thousands, and so on. They're all going to be sixes. So what I do in this case instead of writing it this way I'm just going to write my decimal all the way to the one decimal that repeats which is a six and I'm gonna put a bar over it and this bar is a way of indicating that that digit repeats okay so this bar right here goes over the digit or digits that repeats. All right, and that again is a very important part. So we have a terminating decimal that has a remainder of zero, and 
we have a repeating decimal, which you'll always have a certain pattern. Okay, so you have a remainder that repeats, you have a digit that keeps occurring over and over, or you'll have a pattern of digits that keep recurring over and over. And so we put that bar over the digit that repeats.